This video is made for adult collectors because the movies are violent, I guess. I don't know. I'm not I'm not the MPAA. I don't rate these things. Rise of the Beast releases in less than a hundred days now, and the toys are starting to come out. I can't wait for that main line to release because it looks like so much fun. But Studio Series toys have trickled out into various game stops here in Canada, so I picked up four figures. Totally not because it's the only four I could find. We got Freezer, Bumblebee, Air Razor and Battle Trap. Four very unique toys from one another, so this should be interesting. I feel like this brings a certain variety of quality and complexity to the table. These are all part of the same line, and yet they're very different from each other and like in look and feel, but at the same time, they feel like they fit in the same universe. And they do look great in that Bumblebee Studio Series shelf I got, so that's a plus. I'm excited for the film. I'm reserving my judgment and have been staying away from plot leaks and stuff, because like, why read them. The whole point of the film is to go on blind to be surprised, feel the emotion the filmmakers want you to feel. So all I really know is the blurbs on the back of the boxes, but they've since been recycled. But let's start small and work our way up. A system I am going to abandon as soon as I finish Freezer, but Freezer! This is a Freezer. In the Freezer. I am a comedic genius. Hi. Hello. Hi, Ruby. Hi. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Look at that tail. Look at that tail. Freezer is a core class toy that is not getting retooled into Frenzy. I see that a lot, but like, Frenzy's a radio. None of this can become a radio. <laughs> Anyways, Freezer by himself is a really cool toy. I love the deco. The rusty colors on the light grayish brown works so well. And this small scale, it works even better because like, it covers most of the surface of the toy. It's better than the Siege because Siege only covered parts of the toy with the same sort of paint scheme, but because they were much bigger toys, it looked a lot more disjointed than it does on Freezer, but because he's small, they can put the paint all over the place. Head sculpt is great, but I have a bit of silver overspray on the top lip. It's like, you know, he's in Mad Max Fury Road on his way to Valhalla or whatever. Also, ob obligatory General Grievous pose. <coughs> he's shorter than your average core, but he's like a lot wider and feels like he has more mass because of his limbs. His hands are also five millimeters, so extra guns and all that can go in his hand and there he goes. <laughs> Loose joints. This though is an issue. The elbow is cracked. And that's not just a my toy thing. My friends also have this problem. It doesn't hinder anything. It just looks bad. Like it's not making the elbow loose or it doesn't fall off all the time. It's just a small hairline crack, but it is there. So Freezer is full of ball joints, like everywhere. You got a ball joint in the neck that only lets him look left and right about that far, up and down. However, there's also a hinge, so you can hinge it up and he'll go immediately out of focus. And then you can rotate the head a little bit more. So there's that. You got ball joints at the shoulders. They're very loose on my copy. And then at the elbows, um, all the arms are exactly the same. You got hips that are also really loose. They go out on this angle, but they don't go out at any other angle just due to how the ball is cut. So that's a little unfortunate. I also wish there was a hinge joint right here so you could pose him better because there's only a ball joint at the lower knee that or like whatever you want to call that that allows for a little bit of a rotation and then a foot swivel and a little tiny bit of a tilt more forward and back than anything. But you can get him into that running pose he was in in the trailer for like a second in the background. But yeah, he's not the most poseable core. I mean, he's got a lot of joints but it's just so awkward to pose him around because of all the ball joint like placement, especially in the legs. So yeah, he's not terrible though. He's still a fun little toy. Transformation is a bit basic. It doesn't do much. It creates a mounted turret that I'm gonna skip because you kind of need Scourge for that and I don't have Scourge, but it does also turn into a gun. He's a target master which is cool as hell. While he's a bit heavy for most toys, he still looks like an epic gun. Too bad they didn't make it blast effect compatible. Why? Why is he not blast effect compatible? What is happening? Why? You're making my voice crack, man. This is just the Kingdom one with leg extenders. It looks weird to me because the arms are so small, but the legs are extremely long. I will say she's very solid. 
Like it's a very stable deluxe with no loose joints and those new extended legs are just very tall. Like the price feels worth it because you're getting a lot of toy here. And if you if you have a GameStop, like what is it? Edge Platinum or whatever, you're paying 32 as opposed to 36. So I don't know, it feels worth it to me. Now the Kingdom Mold was fine. So I'm not mad that they used the mold here. It's a great mold. I just find it odd that the mainline one looks vastly different. The whole Rise of the Beast toy line is weird because of the film delays and how they had to mash everything in different spots. The way the bird beak works too, on in robot mode, the waist kind of locks with the bird beak unless you mistransform it a bit. So you can't use the waist joint when the bird head is tabbed in. I do like how the hawk like head looks. The pointy parts look like feathers and the nose peeks down to look like a beak. I love the way they incorporated bird design into her actual head. She also comes with the two rockets, which are very tiny and came loose in the box for me when I got home. So please be careful when buying this. Like they came out of the cardboard on the drive home and were rattling around. So I was going to show you areas of posing, but like it's just the kingdom one. I don't really need to. However, there is something I wanted to point out in regards to her, not like her posing, but something completely different. And that's her display factor because putting her on the... I knocked over RC. Putting her on the Bumblebee movie shelf, she doesn't quite fit in to me with the rest of these. Then again, once I get the other beasts, it should probably match up a little bit better, but she matches up a lot more with this stuff because she's that mold. So it's just a weird little display thing I've noticed because he died. I just, I don't think it fits there properly. That is also just me. Transformation is just the kingdom one again also, so I'm going to skip that too. But the alt mode, I'm not the biggest fan of. And it's the legs. Because of how extended they are in robot mode, it makes the bird mode so damn weird. But the wings are really good. The colors on the in the wingspan, it's just all lush. They're super articulated and you can get her into like perching poses, which honestly might be how I display her. It's a cool figure and I'm glad to have it, but like it's the one I'm the most bored of. Probably because it's a it's a shared engineering retool of a toy that I've had two previous mold variations of in the past. And while this retool is cool, it doesn't change a lot for me. And the furnace is turned on and you're gonna hear a hum, I apologize. Colors seem very bland too, because there isn't much variation apart from the green on the wings. It just, the brown that they chose too looks like vomit. Now we get into the interesting stuff, this thing. Battle Trap is such a mess. There's a lot of cool stuff here, but like a lot of it is fiddle on him. The shoulders don't tab in and apparently that's also like isn't an only me thing, but there is a fix for that in case you have that problem. So you can check that out. The toe hitch on the back of the arms feels like such an afterthought considering it's the main reason the alt mode doesn't stay together. I'll, I'll talk about that later. The colors though, they're swish. A lot of it is plastic color difference, so the color separation is more impactful and clean, but the paint is also pretty nice. The plastic feel-wise is fine. I'm not smacking it with a pencil, that's stupid, but the plastic on the chest is softer. Same with the plastic on the legs on the panels, and you that's so you can flex them. They need to flex slightly to get around certain parts of the transformation, so I'm okay with the softer plastic, better than the plastic breaking while transforming it. However, I have had a friend say something that actually makes a lot of sense, and that's if you have to make the plastic a specific way so the transformation doesn't break the toy, I think you need to rethink how you're engineering it so that it doesn't do that. He comes with a wrecking ball, and I like how it does the bulkhead thing. It's also like a better wrecking ball than bulkheads. Head sculpt is so damn good. The lines, the paint, the angles, it all looks so menacing, and I can totally see David Sobolov's voice coming out of that. My friends, though, have uh, shown me that the way his eyes are look like that anime blushing thing, and I can't unsee that now. And neither can you. Have fun. So his articulation is pretty average, but it's also kind of clunky. Um, the head is on a ball joint. However, there isn't a lot of like side to side tilt and only a little bit of up and down. There's enough up, but like downs, eh. You can untab it, but it also likes to do that by itself. Like, oh, posing the header, there it goes. It's not the most secure tab in the world. So it does like to come out every once in a while. Plus you've got this like little gap here that I'm not a huge fan of. Shoulders can rotate a full 360. And this is where it gets kind of clunky because of the toe hook. You got bicep swivel in and out. The backpack has come on tabbed and it likes to do that quite a lot. Oh my God, come on. Uh, bicep rotation, shoulder pad moves independent. Same with this little thing. 90 degree bend at the elbow, nothing at the wrist. This can move and get in the way of literally everything and annoy you. This one, like I said, likes to come on tabbed a lot. 
Um, I just, I haven't done the fix yet. I'll do it eventually. You do have waist rotation and it's knocked the backpack out again. Ugh, these two tiny little tabs do not help at all. They don't grab onto anything. They're just sort of like a placement thing. It's very annoying. Hips can go forward. They can go back in and out. You've got a thigh rotation that stops here and then clicks there. It's very weird. I don't get why it does that, but it, it does that, I guess. Uh, you do have over 90 degrees of bend at the knee there and ankle tilt and the foot can go back. So he's got like your standard sort of Voyager. Oh, the backpacks come undone. Forget it. He's got your standard Voyager stuff, but like it's weird. I don't know why the thigh swivels click the way they do and the backpack's annoying and that's annoying and then the toe hitch is annoying. It's just annoying. Now the part that sucks ass, the transformation. Let's struggle together, shall we? <laughs> Okay, are we ready? Am I? I'm not mentally ready for this. Ugh. It's not the worst transformation in the world. This one's worse. But it's... This is not a walk through the transformation. This is just going to be me struggling with it. While pointing out some of the things I've learned about getting this guy into his alt mode. Starting with... Getting the legs done and out of the way first because then that frees up your ability to do the top because the top is the annoying part. Open this up. Okay, now here comes the annoying parts. I'm actually gonna have to move this up. Rotating this, right? Rotate the front end. Spin this around. Bring this out. Fold this in. Don't do that. Fold up the head. The instructions make it seem like the head is supposed to go like this. It's not. It's supposed to fold up all the way like this and then go into the truck. Otherwise, it just won't fit. So just make sure you do that and I'm doing something wrong and it's bothering me. Now, this is the worst part, the arms. So you wanna get everything sort of lined up and now the torso is moving again. These little like spiky parts here, they're they're, the gap is supposed to go around this section right here. That way it all sits flush. Cause if you don't do that, it doesn't sit flush and then it sticks out and it pokes the top and the top doesn't like to stay in place. Even more than it already doesn't wanna stay in place. And you gotta like, Get all this in here. There we go. Ah, rookie mistake. Rotate. Did he just fall in half? Did this just happen? He, okay. They're not cooperating right now. It is very bothersome. Oh, come on, you have a place to go. There we go. I think that's worked. I think it's worked, okay. Now getting the, the front tabbed in, this is a part everybody seems to struggle with at first. So the, the way I've, I've figured out how to do it because one of my friends showed me how to do this. Why is the arm already out of place? I haven't even done anything to it yet. There we go. All right, so you wanna, you wanna put it in like this first and then sort of pop it around like that. It feels very scary and I don't like doing it, but you know, that's how I get it in. And then this side tabs in perfectly fine. This side never does. Now, another thing that I learned about this thing very recently was the arms actually, they don't tab in, but they sit in here. There's a spot for them to sort of go in. They soft tab into place. So make sure you do that. Otherwise it's just gonna be an actual nightmare. Something is misaligned. There we go. Yep, the top's coming undone. Of course it is. <sighs> That's good enough, truck. Alt mode looks like it's ready to explode. The tow hitch pushes up on everything and gets in the way a lot. I feel like they designed everything and then had to rush this part because they ran out of time or something because the tow hitch feels so tacked on. You can take it off though. There are two screws on each arm you can remove and take the hitch off and that makes it sit a lot more flush and everything tabs in. But now the truck looks weird. Like I really want to love this toy and I think it's okay. I like it but it's riddled with fit issues and it's just not fun to transform. Not to mention the clear hinge and the way the hood taps in. I don't know why the clear plastic for the windows is an insert. They're doing inserts on a lot of these, like Bumblebee has it too. It's great, I love it. But why is the hinge not part of the hood and it's part of the insert, the clear insert, and I can see a stress mark. So it's just annoying. <laughs> this is one I'd say wait for a sale because while it looks badass in robot mode, it's just not super fun to mess with. Posing it is great, but getting it into tow truck mode, I don't think I'm going to do after this video. I was not expecting this toy 
to be the one I like the most, but hell, it is. It is the most solid, sturdy, intricate, yet simple toy of the lot, and experiencing it is just a blast. It's a brand new Bumblebee mold. Thank God we're done with that stupid ass Bayverse B mold with the fiddly transformation, fragile doors, and the Chad head. Look at the clear plastic. It's an insert. Thank fuck. The only thing wrong with it is the paint. It looks better on the original digital renders because the yellow they chose washes out the silver, making it look unpainted. Also, to those thinking this is a retool of Bumblebee, it's not. There's no shared tooling with anything else. It shares engineering, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. I think if they chose a more goldish yellow like Jeep B, like off-road B, they would have been able to make that silver pop more and it would look less unpainted. Other than that, the tooling's pretty great. I love how the limbs look proportional to the body. Now the plastic, it's thick. The plastic actually feels like something from 2009. It was the first thing that stood out to me when I picked it up. It feels a lot better than the other three figures I have from this wave, and I hope more figures down the line can copy this quality. Battle trap. Accessories are cool. You get a gun and his knife, but his knife is unpainted and his gun is fully painted. I guess I see why the blade is the way that it is, but it still looks weird. I'll give it some silver later. His articulation is pretty standard. You got like all the different sort of oh, ball jointed shoulders, bicep swivel, elbow bends, but there's a couple of neat things in here. For starters, you have ankle swivel, which is something you don't get very often. Um, it doesn't rotate at the top, it only rotates at the bottom. So you only get ankle pivot, even whichever way this is, it's still just the ankle pivot. But that's pretty neat. You also have like heel rotation due to transformation if you can use that at all. But I have a problem with this thing and that's his head. Everything is solid on this except for his head. It's ex it's extremely loose. It flops around, especially when you look this way. He, he like likes, there you go. He likes to look down a lot. So I do need to pop it off and fix it and I can fix it very easily. But it is very annoying trying to get him into like, oh, cool shot this way. Oh, he's looking down again. Pain. The Toys Transformation is a very familiar Bumblebee conversion. Like there isn't much to change at this point on this particular design of Bumblebee, but the way they do the legs is neat. The way the feet tuck into the side and the back of the car folds out, it's simple yet intuitive. Pegging them together is a pain though. The arms are just like off-road B in conversion, but folding and unfolding the windshield is super compact and a lot better than previous Studio Series and Earthspark B's backpack. Car mode is so nice. The off-road parts are so neat and they beef him up super well, making him not feel like a Bumblebee we've gotten so many times already. I love this Camaro and I think they nailed the shaping here. It makes me want to get Studio Series 01, but like this. The headlights are picked out super well. The black around the wheel arches and the black on the back, the trunk section, it's all painted super well. And now I also know why the robot mode doesn't have as much paint on it. I bet GM's paid a lot for them to make the car look accurate and that's probably why. It's just a nice Studio Series Deluxe and it's definitely worth picking up. This one, I would totally pay full price for this. Like, it feels worth it. So as a whole, the first wave though, it's all right, but first waves usually are. The last night had a very meh wave one too. So like, there's just some good and some all right. There's nothing horrible here. I'm glad I have them all, but Bumblebee and Freezer are like the definite pickups I'd recommend. And the other two are like cool, but grab them on sale. I couldn't find Cheetor or RC and Scourge hasn't released at the time of recording this. And I do really want that Cheetor. My God, it looks so neat. But yeah, I'm super excited to see the rest of the toys from this line and to see the main line, God, that, they look so good and they're gonna be cheaper. So I'm so, I'm all for that. I'm so excited. But that's been my look at the first wave of Rise of the Beast Studio Series toys. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.